What do you recall from the call you got after you made an appearance on Merv Griffin? Well, first of all, I think it was terrific that I was able, through my personality, to pass all of those pre-interviews when I did the talk show. Because when you do a talk show the first time, you know, they want to do a pre-interview to see if you really can talk on the talk show and open up your mouth or do you freeze and not say anything. Uh, and, and so this, I, I passed through those kind of pre-interviews very easily. And so when I did the first Murph Griffin show, which was Shaggy Green, that was the interviewer, he was the guest host. Uh, and he is a great comedian and very funny guy. And I think because he's a funny guy, he kind of turned me on when I was out there on that show to make me also funny and full of life and, and all that. And uh, he complimented me during the show and all that. And it was, it was really terrific so that I was funny on that show. And so the next day, I got a phone call from Lucille Ball. And she said that I'm doing happy anniversary and goodbye with Art Carney and with so and so and so and so. And she mentioned all the, the names, Academy Award winning uh, guys and uh, very famous women uh, in that TV show. And she said, I want you to be doing a guest spot. I want you to play the masseur, the Italian masseur. I think it would be fantastic with your body. And you are so funny. Arnold, you were so funny at that Murph Griffin show. We were laughing. I was sitting there with my husband, and we were, uh, and we were laughing. And uh, we wanted you to come in and to read for this part. And she's as big of a star as there was. She, was, the a, she was the, you know, 800-pound gorilla. There's no, no two ways about it. I mean, she was like the monster of the entertainment industry, you know. Uh, uh, also, as a woman in those days, that was very unique to have someone be that powerful. And you rehearsed with her for a, a week. You, you obviously get the job. Uh, take me to the live taping. Well, I, my English was not yet that good. So I remember that she kept uh, saying the whole week when we rehearsed, she says, now you have to project more, you have to project more. I didn't really understand what project more means. You know, so, uh, but every day when we rehearsed, she kept saying, project, and you know, I wanted it to be louder, and blah, 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 and all this. And this is great, and you're doing really well on it, and all that stuff. It says, and then she said, you know, because on Friday, or on Monday when we're shooting, we're shooting live. And then I said, I said, okay, great. I had no idea what she meant by live. And uh, so I remember when in there that day, and we did again a little rehearsal before, and she says, now we're gonna go, and uh, go through the whole thing again. Your part will come up in an hour and 17 minutes and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. So then they took me out and they said, when you see the green light there, that's when you go and ring the doorbell. And that's when you go in. Just like we always did. And so I rang the doorbell and then I heard her already on the other side. Yeah, yeah who is it? Who, who is that? Who is it, you know? And then she opened up the door and then I, you know, I said, uh, hi, my name is you know, Joe Sandow, and I'm the masseur. And all of a sudden, I'm uh, hearing this huge applause. And so I'm looking out, and I'm realizing there's a live <laughs> audience. <laughs> it was packed. It was packed. And she luckily saved my butt because she says, well, don't just stand around here with your massage table there. I mean, just uh, do something. Because you're I mean, frozen. Yeah, I, I, I'm now looking at this audience, kind of looking around and say, wait a minute, son of a bitch, you never told me that there is going to be an audience. But of course, she said it's live. But I did not know what that meant. You know, so I just it went, like I said, over my head. It was so much fun doing this scene. But it all kind of like started from doing the Murph Griffin show and getting the attention from her because of the show and because of my personality. I am Rico. Oh, y yes. Well, won't you go? Oh, you are in. <laughs> the best advice she ever gave you would be what? Well, I think that she uh, always talked about how difficult it is to break into Hollywood and how to have a positive attitude and to just, you know, study hard and uh, not to listen to the naysayers and all those kind of things. And the, the most amazing thing about Lucille Ball was, as tough as she was, she was really a sweetheart of a woman. 
inside. There was just a heart that was beyond belief because every single project I did, I remember after that I did Stay Hungry, she wrote me a letter and said, I'm proud of you. I saw the movie. We just loved it. You're such a great actor. And we're so happy that we were the ones that got you started. And then I went and did Pumping Iron, she would write a letter again. And when I did, uh, you know, The Villain with Kirk Douglas, she wrote me a letter. I mean, Conan, I mean, she really was on top of it, you know, until she passed away. Uh, always extremely supportive.